Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture we will talk about the int data type in Java. So here is our outline. We will talk about integers and the int data type. We will see the range of an int variable. We will initialize an int variable and we will print the value of an int variable. So let's get started. So first of all, you know that an integer is a number that doesn't have a decimal part. And we have already seen some examples, alright? So how we can work with such numbers in Java? Simply, just like we have a type to work with strings, we have some types to work with integers. And the int data type is a data type that is used to work with integers, okay? So now we can declare a variable of type int, and we can store integers inside this variable. So let's talk about the range of an int variable. So first of all, what do you mean by this? Basically, it is the interval of values that can be stored in an int variable. So first of all, let's declare an int variable. We will do it like this. We will put the type, and after that, we will put the name of the variable followed by a semicolon. It is the same as before. The only difference is that now we are using the int type, all right? So now this variable is called number, and we can store integers inside it. Now you might ask, what is the minimum and what is the maximum value that I can store inside an integer? So this is the range. So this over here is the range of an int variable. So all numbers in this interval can be stored in the variable number, all right? So the minimum number is this one, and the maximum number is this one. So all numbers greater than the maximum number, or less than the minimum number, cannot be stored in the variable number. And if you try to store a number greater than the maximum, or less than the minimum, we will get an error, okay? So now, let's initialize some int variables. Have a look at this code over here. So I'm initializing a variable called i1, its type is an integer, and it is equal to 5. So the number 5 will be stored inside i1, okay? And also we are initializing i2, i3, i4, and i5. And we can use them just like any other variable, okay? Now have a look at i6 and i7. Over here, I'm trying to store this number inside i6. And this number is greater than the maximum. So we will get an error. And this number over here is less than the minimum. And I'm trying to store it inside i7. So we will get an error also, alright? So let's see how we can print the value of an int variable. So suppose that we have these two variables of type integer, alright? i1 is equal to 5 and i2 is equal to 10. So we can simply use the println function to print the value of i1 for example. So this will print 5. And also we can do some arithmetic operations. So I can print i1 plus 2. So this over here will be calculated and then the result will be printed. So i1 is equal to 5. So over here we have 5 plus 2 it is equal to 7. So 7 will be printed. Note that over here this is an expression. We will calculate its value and we will print it. We are not adding 2 to i1. So we are not modifying the variable i1. Okay? So i1 will remain equal to 5. What we are doing over here is that we are taking the value of i1 and we are working with it. Alright? And the same happens over here. I'm printing i1 minus i2. So the value of i1 is equal to 5 and the value of i2 is equal to 10. So over here we have 5 minus 10. So minus 5 will be printed. And also i1 will remain equal to 5 and also i2 will remain equal to 10. We are not modifying these variables. We are just using their value, okay? And remember, this over here is called an expression. So this is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.